All right then, let's continue on our electrophilic aromatic substitution odyssey and look at some interesting subtleties. We have already learned the basics, mechanism in chapter 22, and the big overview on regiochemistry and how that is Im that impacts um, the substituents impact both regiochemistry and reactivity in the earlier sections of this chapter. So now we're going to just look at a little bit more deeply, and I think actually this mini lecture will help you understand even better what's going on when that aromatic nucleophile meets some big honking electrophile. So moving right along. What we're focusing on now is the reaction conditions, and what I really am going to say is that this is really all about the subtle influence of pH and what we can do to you know, maybe minimize or maximize that that influence. So this is actually a really good review of chapter 6 in acid-base chemistry. The bottom line, no surprise here, just think about the mechanism, think about the what electrophiles and nucleophiles are present, and then I think everything's going to be totally predictable. Alright, so conditions, particularly focusing on pH. We have aniline aniline with the amino group on the aromatic ring is a great nucleophile. So in this chapter we're pretty much used to thinking of the aromatic ring as a nucleophile, but gee whiz, what's more nucleophilic than a nitrogen with a lone pair? Not much. So when I think of acidic conditions in aniline, acid base always wins, right? So what I should think of when I think about the first step in this mechanism is that my amine of aniline is going to be protonated to give me this ammonium ion. Well if that's the case things get wonky because looking at aniline I know that NH2 is an electron donating group and as an electron donating group it is an ortho para director and it makes my aromatic ring more reactive. But this guy with the positive charge on the nitrogen is very clearly an electron withdrawing group, which would in turn lead to meta substitution and deactivation. So what's up? Well, it's exactly as we would predict based on that kind of quick overview of thinking about the mechanism. If I take aniline and try to nitrate it under conditions that are acidic, yes, clearly acetic acid is an acid, but with a pKa of about 4, that's mildly acidic, not tremendously acidic. So what do we see? We see kind of what we'd expect. Substitution from our ortho para directing amino group at the ortho and para positions. But what if we nitrate under our more standard nitration conditions of nitric acid and sulfuric acid? Hoofda! Now we're talking about negative pKa's here. We are talking about forcing strongly acidic conditions. And what do we see? Well, we see a completely different outcome. We see the meta substituted product, and that of course is after workup. So we'd have to have some kind of basic workup, maybe um, probably, oh, I'd say a sodium bicarbonate solution washing out any excess acid and deprotonating our ammonium to give us the amine. So if you think about the mechanism and think about the fact that up here you have only mildly acidic conditions, so there's not much of that ammonium ion present. So we're talking about the primary species will be aniline and therefore we get orthopara direction. But in the case of strongly acidic conditions, then we've got a boatload, the primary species is the ammonium ion, and boom, we get meta directing. Alright, what about this? A phenol, 
under basic conditions. Well, phenol, that's a pretty acidic proton right there. Okay, and why is it a pretty acidic proton? Well, we know that because of resonance delocalization. This is a weaker base, so this is a stronger acid. So it's pretty easy for phenol to be deprotonated to give the phenoxide anion. Well, look at that. It's got a full-fledged negative charge. That makes it much more nucleophilic, much more electron-rich, much more reactive. Therefore, if I carry out an electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction like bromination in the presence of non-basic conditions, so again I'm using a mild acid, and under those conditions I'm not going to have any of the phenoxide because we're under slightly acidic conditions and I get exactly what I'd expect. This is an electron donating group. That means my most nucleophilic carbons are the ortho and para positions and so I get substitution at the ortho and para positions because that carbocation intermediate is most stable with that substitution pattern. Well, what about neutral or basic conditions? Well, then it goes to hell in a handbasket because under those conditions, there's much more of a buildup of delta minus right there on that oxygen, leading to really, really good, <laughs> really super good nucleophilicity at those carbons. And I can't stop the darn reaction from taking place it goes and goes and goes because that's so much more nucleophilic. So the previous example was one of how the regiochemistry changes. This example is one of how the reactivity changes. I cannot stop at the monobromination stage. I, if you will, exhaustively brominate my phenol to get the tribromophenol. So impact of pH is big. What about Friedel Crafts? Well, that's not actually a very easy reaction to have take place. And in fact, if you have an electron withdrawing group on your aromatic ring, Friedel Crafts won't take place. So, what's going on here? Clearly, the amino group, as we've already seen, is orthopara directing and, and activating, so why would this Friedel Crafts not succeed. Well, what is a Lewis acid anyway? A little review. Aluminum, chlorine, 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 empty p orbital, right? A Lewis acid is an electron pair acceptor. And you better believe we have an electron pair. So, what we have done is not protonate our amino group, but we, I guess you could say we've illuminated it. Oh, that sounds really bad. But basically what you've made is something called an eight complex. And what do you see? Well, you see that you have changed the substituent on your aromatic ring into a big time electron withdrawing group, and therefore, the Friedel Crafts is not going to happen. So what's a chemist to do if you want to carry out an alkylation reaction on aniline? Well, protecting groups to the rescue, all you have to do is kind of tweak the nucleophilicity of that lone pair on your amine. So if I actually have that nucleophile react with this electrophile, acetyl chloride, and acetylate my aniline, then I still have an electron donating group, but now that electron donating group is not as nucleophilic as it once was. And that is because it is happy to share the lone pair into the carbonyl. 
So I've got this going on. Which means it's not nucleophilic enough to end up being attacked by the aluminum trichloride. And in fact, I can then carry out my Friedel Crafts reaction. So addition of my typical Friedel Crafts reagents of my alkyl halide and my Lewis acid successfully yields the Friedel Crafts product putting my methyl group in the para position and also the ortho position. We assume we can separate those out. And then if I want, you know, if, if my end target molecule is this guy, all I have to do is deprotect it. So the question here for you is, what reagents do I need to add over the arrow to go from the acetylated aniline to my free amine? I want to think that one over. All right, so the bottom line with these subtle changes in regiochemistry and reactivity is you just need to think about think like a molecule and think about mechanism. Think about what what's going to happen under these conditions. And then coming next, we will expand our look at regiochemistry just a little bit more by looking at oh, aromatic rings with more than one substituent on them. But in the meantime, it's time for some Sven and Oli jokes. I don't think I've had any Sven and Oli jokes in a long time. So I was just looking, and Sven and Oli were, were out duck hunting. They were, they were wasting their time completely. They were out there for a couple hours, and finally Sven says, I wonder why we aren't getting any ducks, Oli. Okay, so I'm from Oklahoma, so I'm not real sure I can do a Norwegian accent. That, you be the judge. But yeah, I wonder why you aren't getting any ducks, Oli, Sven says. And Oli says, I don't know. I wonder if we're throwing the dog high enough. <clears throat> okay, so that one was pretty bad. But how about uh how about this one? Uh yeah. Uh oh yeah, this is a really good one. <laughs> Oli. I need to buy some boards there, Sven. Sven says, How long you want them, Oli? Oli says, Long time. I'm building a house, you know. Ugh, sheesh. Okay, that's enough. Two, Oli, two Sven and Oli jokes is definitely enough, I think, especially with my bad Norwegian accent. So we'll see you in class.